Hi, right, welcome back to another episode of Ask Pastor Keith. How are you doing, Pastor Keith? Doing okay, how about you? I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> uh, today's question is, uh, what are Southland's eschatolo- eschatological views? And maybe you can kind of define what the study of eschatology is, and we can go from there. Okay, um, eschatology means last things. And um, usually the people talking about Revelation, uh, Daniel, Ezekiel, and uh, other parts of the Bible like Second Timothy and First Second Thessalonians and other places that talk about the prophecies, uh, apocalyptic writing, uh, we call it. Now, uh, in understanding apocalyptic writing, uh, there are many views on this, especially John's revelation at the end of the Bible. Uh, some people think it is uh, the past history of the church is compiled in that way. Uh, and then some people think it's a cyclic, it's a cycle that churches go through. Uh, and some people just see it as a, um, a symbol, a symbol of, you know, the seasons of church. And some see it as the future events that are yet to happen. Um, so there is some difference in view uh, of how we approach this apocalyptic writing uh, and uh, it, it, apocalyptic writing has its own uh, literary tool uh, and the use of the symbols and numbers and so forth. So uh, it is not that simple. And um, now I want to talk about more of a reformed view uh, and Presbyterians and all that. They usually tend to be amillennialism. So there's a certain views. So let me explain that premillennialism uh, and uh, postmillennialism and the amillennialism premillennialism believe that Jesus comes back and that we have thousand years very literal view of um, understanding of of the apocalyptic writing post uh, millennialism is Jesus comes back after the millennial uh, thousand years uh, of reign and then uh, our millennialism is ah uh, means uh, there's no millennialism. It's all symbolic. Uh, reform theology usually tends toward uh, our millennialism because reform theology was born uh, during the time of 1500s. Uh, it actually began a little earlier, uh, and and most of them are formulated in 1700s and 1800s. So. Uh, in our history, especially European history, from 1200s to about even the sec- uh, first half of 20th century is generally called modernism uh, because Renaissance and the uh, age of enlightenment and reasoning and modern thoughts and philosophies formed during that time. And um, the highlight of that is 1650s, uh, about 1700. Isaac Newton, our you know scientist, he began to formulate uh, physical behavior in in a formula, uh, in equation, and uh, around that time, uh, humanity has an incredible trust uh, in formulation. So everything can be formulated, and because of that, uh, reform theology is is beginning about 1500s and so forth, have that milieu of thinking built in, so everything can be formulated. So systematic theology was born, and uh, we know John Calvin Institute, uh, you know, he wrote it when he was 21, this is incredible actually. Uh, but before that, uh, Thomas Aquinas wrote something called Summa Theologica, and it's a multi-volume thing, uh, and he was uh, commissioned by the church, Catholic Church, to write down um, the minimum things that we need to believe as a believer, but it's a multi-volume thing. It came, and actually, uh, uh, John Calvin thought the institute, the systematic theology. He thought every believer should know at least these. But uh, what I'm trying to say is, they try to uh, formulate what what things are, and there's an ex- extreme confidence in these things. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the work of the Holy Spirit cannot be really formulated or supernatural or by definition, you know, just having a, 
uh, same uh, condition does not produce same result. That's supernatural. And therefore, it cannot be formulated, and God cannot be formulated. The infinite cannot, cannot be formulated by a finite mind. Right? It's just a ridiculous concept. Nevertheless, uh, we have some understanding, some handle on things of the Lord. Uh, and and uh, so they apply this uh, to you know apocalyptic writing as well. Now what happened is uh, after 135 A.D. Israel was no no longer in existence it's with the Masada suicide. Everything's gone. M- Jerusalem fell at 70 A.D. with the temples and everything else. Now expunging of Israelites out of that Palestine land happened you know, around that time, 135, around that time. So therefore, when the theologians look at Israel's history and the reference to Israel in 1500s and beyond, Israel must be a symbol. It's not a real entity anymore. And because of that, everything was justified by symbolizing as a symbols and types and whatnot. Now that was applied to uh, uh, apocalyptic writing as well. Now uh, it creates some problem. Uh, ni- after 1948, Israel once again become a physical nation uh, and all that. There is no correction, theological correction as a result of it. Only group of people who are doing that was at the at the time was a dispensationalist, um, and uh, I know it's a lot of terms, but uh, Protestant theology usually is covenant theology, and there's a very uh, you know thin slide of uh, dispensationalist who believe that God deals with the humanity in different economy of God, different dispensi- dispensations. As a result, uh, those uh, are taking, uh, especially those group of people, there are, there are others as well, but especially those who took this uh, apocalyptic writing in a literal sense, sometimes too much. As a result, uh, uh, they have become pre-millennialism, uh, you know, and the thousand-year reign of Jesus on earth as a literal thing, and then it comes back after that, and they believe in rapture, uh, as against our millennials don't believe in rapture or any kind of a, a you know thousand-year reign, but it's a development of humanity and so on and so forth. So there's a clash between literal translation and and the symbolic translation. Now uh, post. Uh, millennial is same thing with the pre-millennial, uh, premillennialism, but having Jesus come after when humanity has uh, pretty much control all the elements. Now, so all these things, and with that, it, it even make things more difficult or complex. Is a premillennialist have uh, the rapture place in you know uh, before the tribulation or in the middle of tribulation? Or the after the tribulation. That's a pre-trip premillennialism, or mid-trip premillennialism, or post-trip premillennialism. So where do we stand as a Southland? And uh, I jokingly say we are pan-millennialist. Everything's gonna pan out. All right, don't worry about it. 